Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Shenanigans. So, what's what's up, kids? Soft ghost, Connor. Chair. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm a chair now. Probably moved. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, Happens every Sunday night. You guys are just gonna kill the rest of the day and wait for tomorrow's lunch time, so you can go to the school and visit with the sketchy man behind the tree. Yep. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. When we uh, if we rest for the uh, until next day, I will cast an artisan to heal the rock for one point of. Oh, HP. sweet. Uh, basically, uh, uh, Stroop is going up to him. Scurries up on his shoulders and maybe licks on one of his, one of one of his wounds, and it heals a bit. <laughs> oh, oh, oh I, I see, I see. Thanks, bro. Thanks. And she's it's a little going. bit less. And in that night, Stroopy is going to read some omens. Okay. Yeah. Are you using oh. what? Um, Astrology? Me... Omen reading. Omen, uh, the spell omen reading? No, the proficiency. Okay, the weapon proficiency. Alright. Okay. Uh... I'm using both holy water and unholy water, probably to spray some uh, patterns into the sand. Hmm. Give me just one sec here. Shall I make a check? Or... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um. Let me just read something. La la la, L M N. Omen reading. To use this proficiency, the omen reader phrases general questions about his course of action, such as, is this a good day to start our journey? Should we try to track the orcs to the lair or wait for the next raid? Or when will the dragon return? The DM then makes a proficiency check in secret. If the character fails, the DM can tell him the signs are inconclusive or make up a false answer for a spectacular failure. If the omen reader succeeds, the DM can give the character a vague answer based on an assessment of the situation. An omen is usually good, bad, or inconclusive, although an answer of a day or two or proceed but with caution is acceptable. Omens mm. aren't guaranteed. If a party ignores a bad omen, they might succeed in their task anyway. An omen is nothing more than the DM's best guess about a course of action. So what is your question and what is your check? Uh, my check is 16. Because okay. <laughs> I have high wisdom. Um, my question is... Um, will it be dangerous to capture the one selling moonshine? Do you have 18 wisdom? Yeah. If would it be dangerous to capture the Isis? Yeah, will it be dangerous? Will it be? Will it be dangerous to capture the man selling moonshine? And uh, specifically regarding what was his name? Um, Clarence or something? Cleedence. 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 Will it be dangerous then to capture Cletus. the man? So, so give me the the full question that you're asking. Will it be dangerous to capture the man selling moonshine, Cleedence? The omens are good. In what way good? Will you get a good omen. Hmm. Hmm. I hope this is a false omen. That will be perfect. I mean, it could be a uh, good omen in terms of no, it will not be dangerous. <laughs> So it could be not dangerous, or it will be dangerous. Anyway, I mean, would, would it be a omen. good omen if it was going to be dangerous, yeah. right? <laughs> or you know, you never know. They fucking that's all. Yeah, okay. Maybe it's not dangerous for us, oh, and that's a good omen because <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous for him. Okay. Um. Let me see. So let's go to the next day. Uh, yeah, I would just. It is the next day. It's Monday. School's back in session. All the kids are running about their things. You wait until the afternoon when they break for lunch. And sure as shooting, just before the lunch bell rings, you see this fabulously handsome guy in his early 20s with like long red hair that's tied back in a ponytail but like kind of comes out at the end like splayed like he's got a fabulous complexion chiseled jaw but it's also like really square uh he's got dashing good looks he looks like johnny rico from starship troopers but with long red hair um mm. and he's like walking through the the woods near the place and goes and 
gives a good stretch and starts doing some like really mm. light calisthenics right behind this big tree with his mm. sack uh, with his bag set down next to it. Oh, oh so he's some... literally doing the stuff I do in my sleep. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, he's like doing some stretching, and maybe like a couple of jumping jacks, and then some um, turns, and then some toe touches. Uh, yeah, before we before we do anything, <sighs> um, Ruby would have gotten some strong alcohol from Zen because he has some strong alcohol somewhere. And yeah, I've got some wrong. A, bit, a, bit, a little bit of the strong alcohol in with her moonshine, uh, moonshine, I say, um, milkweed. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. So this is what the four of you see. Mm -hmm. And I, I look up to Zen. Ruby looks up to Zen. Uh, water skin. He drank. Offer. Think of friendship. Okay. I uh, take the wine skin and walk up to the guy. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with you. I'm gonna be there to help. Droopy is going to stay out of sight. Okay. Uh, so Zen and Maximilian only, right? Droopy staying out of sight. Is the rock mm. coming? Yeah, sure. What the heck? Why not? Right. Maximilian, Four Zen, and the deal. rock show up. Maximilian, you're a human. How, right? Yeah. How old are you? 19. Okay. And rock, how old are you? I think I said I'm 20. Perfect. All right. So the three of you walk up to this guy and he's doing his exercise and goes hey yep. Yep, 20. what are you two doing here yeah yeah i heard you that you got the good stuff oh right? whoa what sort of language is that man let's just what you know we of... don't need to be cagey about this stuff what what the good stuff come on <laughs> what the hell so, well what's All up right. i i've let's never seen right either down. of you over here like What's the deal? Aren't you? Oh, should you are, still be in class right now? I haven't heard no, the bell yet. We, uh, well, I mean that's obviously back. because you've been we've been already graduated here a few years back, but you know. All right. Yeah, we heard you had some moonshine. We we're looking to uh, procure some. Of course, of course. Um, well, I got my my friend in the the woods, Till Rexon. Uh, he's the one that, you know, makes it all good stuff, high quality, uh, you know, FDA approved. Oh, no, they got the FDA on the back. Mm -mm. On this side. <laughs> no, no, no. We get regular side. inspections, man. It's all good. No, I, I meant to say on their side. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Weird how on your back and on your side are complete opposite meanings. Um, yeah. So. Uh. You know, you want some moonshine? Not a problem. Uh, you looking to buy by the... You just looking for something for tonight? You want a full bottle? You want a, a vase? Uh, how much you looking to buy? A bottle. Bottle? All right. Your, your standard 750 milliliter glass bottle? <laughs> sure. Excellent. I prefer using metric myself. This whole imperial system is just like, you know... The patriarchy, man, it's keeping us down. Indeed. Yeah. So, uh, that'll be. This stuff is good, and it ha it's you know got to be made way out in the woods so nothing catches fire in town. They don't allow it to be made in town; it's too dangerous. Uh, so that's gonna be plus the prices for glass these days are kind of high. No one's recycling anymore. You know, we're having to make glass from scratch all the time. And there's no sand here. We have to import it all the way from the coast. You want the good sand to get the clear glass. You got to import it from the eastern coast. It's a little expensive these days, but two gold for a bottle is really what will cover it. Two gold. How about one point five, and I'll uh, give you this drink. It's a pretty good brew. I mean, I'm happy to split a drink with you, but, like, you know, my prices are set. Two gold, man. You know, you're you're graduated, you're a wizard, you gotta be have tons of money. I, I mean, I'm, so. I'm the middleman here, I'm the one getting shortchanged. The, my, uh, the, I'm just the distributor, the, the producer makes three quarters of the profit. You know, so if, right. if I sell it for less, I'm just, I'm giving up all of my profits. All right, I hand him 20 silver. 
And he counts uh, it out, say, puts it in his pocket, and uh, reaches into his bag and pulls out this really nice glass bottle. It's got like some. It's not just like a, a like a wine bottle. It's actually got impressions on it, like it was uh, formed in a mold. It has a, a little snake going all the way around it. All right. So, yeah, it's not a mason jar. No, man, it's not a mason jar. It's a seven fifty milliliter bottle. <laughs> okay, Idiot! So, you, don't, you don't even know how to spell exactly. moonshine, right? All right. What kind of scam you running? Well, look. I, I mean, if you want the the student prices, we do. He pulls out a mason jar. We do sell it in mason jars if you want a smaller quantity. But I thought you guys wanted okay. to know this larger quantity. Okay, you, you. Okay, you've got them in mason jars. Oh yeah. I mean, we just you know we got the glass bottles for you know the the people that have the money to afford the really nice. Quant glass and the, the bigger size and all that jazz. Cool. Well, uh, pleasure doing business with you guys. Yeah, and I say, I take a sip and say, pretty good. Here, you try this. Um, give I... me a grub skill check. It, it tastes like paint thinner. <laughs> what? His alcohol? Yeah, his alcohol. It's like 170 proof. Oh, Neil. There's nothing good what in this. Done? It's it's dangerous stuff. <laughs> what, what what have you done making me roll this? Roll it. Oh, oh shit! Oh. You passed right. Oh, you wow. yeah, no problem. You can you drink it and you can say whatever you want. Wow. Yeah. Okay. okay. Is he going to? Cool. Yeah. Uh, what what did you say to him after that? I yeah. handed him the wine skin and say, here, try this. It's some pretty good stuff as well. He takes it and kind of gives it a sniff and goes, uh, some rum. It's uh, sure. Spicy. All right. He takes it and squeezes some and swishes it around and gives a swallow and hands it. Uh, he kind of looks around and hands it to the rock. Here, man. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> bro. I don't know. It smells it smell like Neil. Um, I don't know. It smells like spices. spices. Yeah, it smells kind of like um, cinnamon tea. All right, I'll, I'll take a swig, like a small swig. I don't know what it is. Yeah, all right, you take a small swig. What do you do with it once like you've a taken very, a swig? Very small swig. Better roll my grub check because let's be honest, I don't know. Hmm. It oh, tastes, it tastes a little like garbage. <laughs> oh, it tastes like garbage. Hey, hey, that's really rude, man. Like, come on. Yeah, man. What the hell? Wait, it's I thought this cool. was the wine skin. This yeah. is the wine skin. This oh, is the wine skin wine, that Droopy. Wine, wine yeah. Skin. yeah, this is freaking garbage. And I just throw it back at Zen. Oh. Well, fine then. Dude. More for you. Oh, come on. He looks at Zen expectantly, like you're expecting you to drink oh. some. No, I got some of the good stuff here. Some of the. Uh, what you call it? You just. You're not going to have any? I'm already having some of the moonshine. It's pretty good. I'll save this stuff for later. It becomes very socially awkward as he clearly expected everyone to drink some of it, like the wine skin was being passed around, and he had some, and then he passes someone Whiskey. else, and no one else is drinking any, and he's getting kind of like I, obviously no, awkward I about drank. the situation. I drank it, Neil. You take it back and. No, no, like, I did have a drink of it. Right, right, but you had some, and then you threw it away, <laughs> threw it to the next person, and the three other people aren't, or the two other people aren't drinking it at all, and it's really awkward, because right. it clearly was I supposed gonna... to be passed around, and now it's not. I threw it back at Zen because it was Zen. Like, right, well, no. I'm just telling you, it's, it's kind of... Zen, that, that moonshine's got to be better. Freaking give me that. Uh, yeah, Neil, Neil did him. you roll for the onset time? Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, I hand okay. it to him. So, yeah, you see, the... This guy knows how to make freaking good alcohol. Or you know how to get good alcohol. I mean, it, it's it's fine then, man. Alcohol. You won't get any more of my alcohol. Alright, well, Just it was um, nice meeting you guys and doing business. Uh, see you later? Alright. Yeah, I'll see you later. <laughs> well, thanks for the moonshine. Yeah. Pretty better than your crap, son. Hey, fuck you, Ben. You guys are just start... so rude. You guys are just so rude. Yeah, I think we just start walking off, like, arguing with each other. And at, uh, when they come back, uh, Ruby is going to take the wineskin back. Yeah. 
kick kick uh, rock one uh, against his ankles one time. Yeah, I kind of whispered to rock. Yeah, you may be falling asleep pretty soon. Uh, what, what do you mean you might be falling asleep soon? I feel fine. <laughs> that was the poison we found in the woods. <laughs> Slap him upside the head. Uh, Rock, please go ahead and make me a saving throw versus poison. Okay. I think that's actually one I'm not awful at. Yeah. And, uh, Droopy, Droopy is going to, uh, somewhere from a hiding place, look at the guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I only have to roll 13. Watch me roll 12, kids. Oh, <laughs> it's not even. All right, so in like 12 minutes, Rock just, he's really tired. Like, really tired. As I'm going down, I'm gonna like freaking like try to be, I'm gonna, like, be like the drunk guy at the bar trying to start a fight, but it's like I'm gonna be following it then. Mm -hmm. Not warning me about this. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't like force you into sleep. It's the sort of thing, like if you take a sleeping pill. Um, it doesn't like yeah. instantly knock you out. You just get really drowsy, and if you're sitting and comfortable, you'll fall asleep. But if you're, you can kind of force yourself yeah. through it uncomfortably. Um, uh, okay, yeah, uh, I just start saying, start working out right now. Work it through it. Uh, 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 and Droopy, after, after they left, come um, back and Droopy would have gone to a, high, a place where she can see the guy, but they're still in hiding. So you're watching this guy from your hiding spot, and like you know go. the kids come out for lunch. A bunch of them, the younger ones, head over there. They start giving him some money. He starts handing them some mason jars. They head back. They start sipping their drinks in the middle of lunchtime. These kids are going to be kind of drunk in class if they actually drink enough to get drunk. They're probably you know they're they're kids. They're mostly daring each other to drink alcohol and not really enjoying it. They're yeah, they're also probably kids, and they can probably get pretty drunk. Pretty yeah, probably, but I mean, if you've ever seen, I guess I've never seen a kid try and drink 151, but I presume it'd be like, and then like just pass it to the next person and not try hey, it if again. You, if you give some to me, it'd probably be pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not good at hard liquor. How long, Neil? How long? Uh, it takes like, after like 15 minutes, you see him like, like yawning and like doing the work and he keeps oh, I get tired, but he waits for the whole like half hour of people coming through and buying stuff from him before uh, you know the the lunch bell rings 45 minutes after it started initially and the kids start going back inside and he just like sits down stretches out you know takes a hat out of the bag and like plops it on his face and just leans against the tree and takes a nap and he's now asleep for 3 hours <laughs> <laughs> okay neil uh huh. <laughs> Is there like anybody still outside? Uh huh. Other than him? Yeah, there's a couple of. There's some yard duties on patrol. Mm. And some parents and. Just people walking around near town. Honestly, considering who's walking around, I don't think they'd care if we pick, pick this mm. guy up and carry him away. Yeah, we should just uh, pick it up and um, yeah. get him out of here. <laughs> I'm just like, alright, Rock, go pick him up. We All just right. head over Man, and just be like, Man, Wait, what Rock is this is guy asleep. doing? Rock is asleep. He failed to save. No, dude, I'm asleep. I'm he's doing he's been like doing workout the entire I'm time. Lunging. You fall asleep. It's it's the poison. It's yeah, so if there's any moment where like Rock is working out doing his push ups, he's like in between sets, you're on the ground, like, oh this is so comfortable. Maybe I should just <laughs> Close no, my no. Oh, just keep you working. Failed he, failed he's failed to save. He will fall asleep. But it's the sort of thing where, as I said before, mm. if you take a sleeping pill and you really mm, yeah. like knowing it's like, going to take effect, struggle against it, you can make your way through. Okay. Um, so okay. if he continues to work out and not stop and not get himself in a comfortable position, he'll Remember, probably be fine. I mean, everywhere so I go, right? lunges that will keep you awake. Lunges. Unless oh, you yeah. get to like the bottom of your lunge and it's just really comfortable for that moment, and no. then you just <laughs> you know, if you're doing you, good you lunges, know the feeling, right? Your your knees uh, like after eighty hours staying awake, you get tired, <laughs> but you can force your way through it. <laughs> so easy. But, it's hard. Yeah, it is so easy. But halfway wherever we're going, I'm sort of going to pass out. Yeah. Um, like, so you have months. this guy on your back. Where are and you taking? I, I don't where? know. I'm just going to pass out somewhere. Yeah, but where are you guys taking him? I don't know. We'll just, there, we'll just act like we're going somewhere and wind up going through a back alley. But where? Like, what is your destination? 
<laughs> uh, to the outside right. of town, like the outskirts. Okay, just you take him outside of town. Yeah, just find a good place in the woods. All right. <laughs> a little bit into the woods. Not that far, Neil. Uh, and uh, 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 Droopy is, uh, when we uh, stop, uh, Droopy is looking at them. Barry? No, not Barry. We need information. All right, Do we got... happen to stumble upon a random gnome again? No, you don't stumble upon any more gnomes. But you do get him out into the woods. Okay. It's time to interrogate him. Mm -hmm. The rock falls asleep out in the woods with this person. The two of them are napping side by side for a little while. Um, but it's more like I just kind of have him on my back and All right. fall over. Does anyone have rope? Mm. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, go into town, buy some rope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's three hours. So. Yeah, three you got hours. time. Yeah. Rope is yeah, one don't... gold for fifty feet. Yep, yeah, I'm buying. You buy the thin rope. Worth which the rope makes sense. Yeah. Um, and yeah. while the Zen is um, buying the rope, Rupi is going to start digging. Rupi starts he's digging. Burying. He's not. She's not burying him, but she already starts digging. <laughs> All right. Um. So couple hours pass and eventually the rock and this guy wake up i assume he's tied up now yes he's tied up okay he wakes up yep. what the hey what the hell's going on <laughs> she's the cobalt digging a gray <laughs> hey 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 you're the guy from before what the hell man yeah, I knew you were me. fucking weird. You wouldn't blank and you didn't drink anything you gave me. I should have known to leave right then and there. What the hell is this shit? Hmm? I'm no I told you to taste like We garbage. just need... You're right, man. We... Why isn't he tied up? We need to... Because I'm not an idiot who sells moonshine to kids. So? Who yeah. cares? It's not illegal. They're yeah, parents. well, you upset somebody. Well, somebody then they could have been an adult and come to talk to me about it. But what the hell? All right, fine, fine. All right, all right. I'm cool. I understand. I understand. I'm tied up. You're you're in power charge. You're you're in charge. All right. What what do you, what do you want? All right. Where's the guy producing the alcohol out in the woods? Till Rexon. Yes. I can lead you to him. All right. Cool. I, I can't lead you to him while I'm tied up, though. Yeah, I Don't make sure it. his hands are tied. Mm -hmm. But you know. Take put, a, put a lead on from him. around the tree. Put a lead on yeah, him. just like you know, this is. So you start walking with him. He starts leading you into the woods. I I, I kick uh, the rock up away. I'm like, come on, stop sleeping. <laughs> I I like drag him down to the ground and then <laughs> and then yeah, I, I just kind of say to him, "Don't worry about that grave that guy was digging. He just does that. It's weird." Yeah. <laughs> She. So, you know, I, I would have just let him... You didn't have to... This is an up-and-up operation. I told you, the FDA is totally behind this. Like, I, yeah. I would have just taken you to him. Anyway, we offer tours of the place all the time. This is really <laughs> an unnecessary you, step, guys. But then you <laughs> went and sold it to kids. But that's not... Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. But I grew up drinking the, alcohol from the time I was eight. And I came out just fine. Look at me. <laughs> you sold it to the wrong person's kid. Let's be more specific. We oh, sold it to shit. The wrong Who did I sell it to? No, no, no. We won't say. The wrong person. Oh, the fuck. Wrong all right, person. all right. A lot of rich kids go to that school. I can understand. Um, yeah. You're not going to kill me, though, right? Maybe. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, dude, I, if look, if I pissed off one of them noble folks and they're really upset about this, I, I care more about my life than this business. As I told you, I'm just a middleman. I'm just a distributor. I can leave. I can go to a different town and never come back. You know, you don't. We don't need to take this any farther, guys. I'll, I'll take you here, and then I'll I'll just go. I, I'm I'm a single man. I don't have a family. I don't have any property in town. There's mm. endless possibilities. You're really freaking me out, dude. I, I, Zen, Droopy looks up to Zen. No one miss him, Barry. Dude! He's oh, so old, he can't understand, Neil. Shit! Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I cannot understand either. No, I'm the only one. 
so annoying. That's so annoying. <laughs> no, but it's such a great like. It's such a great like Scooby Doo and Shaggy. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm like the only one who can actually understand. Oh, mission, yeah. baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bro, I think she likes you. Movie do we do? So so <laughs> so. Till Rexerson, he's uh, just out here. He's got a nice still. Uh, he's a cool dude. He makes some good stuff. Um, a little strong, but hey, who am I to complain? The kids like it enough. Uh, I, I, you know, I've also sold some to all sorts of people. But, but oh, hey, hey, there's the place right up ahead. And sure enough, uh, just over the top of this hill, there's like a little cabin. It's a log cabin. There's a big chimney coming out of it, and there's like a little sh uh, shack maybe 50 feet away from it with all the trees cleared around in like a 30 foot radius from the little shack. Um, oh, and walking out from the shack towards the log cabin is this like, I don't know. He's got to be in his early sixties. He's got like lots of little white chest hairs and maybe a little tiny bit of a, a gut hanging over his belt. He's shirtless, but he's got his pants on. He's got a kind of poofy long white hair. That's kind of missing up on top. It kind of looks like a, like a mad scientist who lives in the woods, but like kind of works out a little bit, so he's kind of got a decent frame. But he's also like oh. sixty, and you know, it oh, was no, old man Rex all the time. <laughs> uh, he sees all of you guys coming with what's his name's hands are tied behind his back, so it doesn't necessarily look yeah. like his hands are tied he behind is. his back, but he's just kind of walking, and he, he gives you all a wave and goes, "Hi there." You here for uh, some moonshine? A uh, droopy to then burn down? Oh, hold on, let's talk to him. Burns down. In cobalt. Shh, shh, only Zen knows. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's a shack. Hello? What's up? Hello, hello, how are you? We've got I'm a doing well. Issue. Yes, we, we brought you, uh, your friend here. You can see him tied up. Oh, uh, well, Cletus, what'd you do to get yourself all tied up, huh? I don't know, Cletus, what did you do? Yeah. Uh, well, I think we're in a little bit of trouble, Rexy. Uh, no, Tiller. What the hell, whatever this guy's name is. Rex, Rexerson? Rexerson. Re Re Rexerson? 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 Something like that. Till Rex. Rexen? Till Rexen, Rexen, that's it. Till Rexen. Yeah, T Rex. Good job. <laughs> All right. So I just say, listen, this guy's been selling your moonshine to some kids down at the wizarding school and mm -hmm. mighty pissed off somebody's parent. Well, parents ought to be pissed off about what their kids do, and it's the natural order of things. It ain't nothing too strange. Right, but we've been hired to put a stop to... What are you, this. communists? Don't you approve of the free market? I'm offering a product and a service, and if those parents want to put yeah. me out of business, they should offer a competing profit. You well, know, they did this profit. Oh, uh, no, they're just trying to profit. shut me down for no reason. This is bullshit. Yeah. Well, you know what else is BS? If you freaking take away our jobs, because this is how we make our. Li Are you saying that we don't earn a livelihood? I'm saying this is wrong. You know, I, the, the free market, there, there, there's a. There's a. There's a, there's, a, there's, a there, there's people that want to buy this, and I'm producing it, and I'm selling it. And what's wrong there's with that? That's the, that's the way things ought to be. Uh, we, we're producing a product and we're selling it, and uh, it's it's a free market, like you said. Yeah, it's free market competing against free market. Well, I guess I see your point. All right, cool. Glad glad we're on the same on the same page. Yeah, we're not we're no commies. Where'd you get that idea, anyways? No, we're not communists. I'm trying to shut down free enterprise is what I'm seeing. You guys are mm -hmm. maybe not communists then, but you're just uh, hoodlums, enforcers, opponent. thugs. Yeah, pretty much. I know. Yeah. <laughs> we need well, it's refreshing you. to have someone admit it for a change. I admire your honesty. We yeah, yeah, no need problem. you to stop having any of your middlemen sell anywhere near the wizarding school. Well, 
Uh, he looks direct orders to make sure this is off the market for it's, at it's least the visioning school. Sell it wherever else you want, but don't sell it to the children. He looks at the three of you, completely so ignoring Droopy. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. He's completely ignoring me. Yeah, totally. Kobolds are ignored in combat. Um, <laughs> I'm not completely okay. ignoring you, but like, you know, he's looking at the three of you as threatening, and Droopy's like the cute little kobold off on the yeah, side that's like, ah, oh, that's it, a pet. It, it, it's I'm like, looking like, around them, and Droopy and sneak rock. around around them out of sight behind the house. Sure. Behind the check. Sure. He says, all right, all right. A deal's a deal. I won't cool. sell, well, Rexy here. No, T Tilly no. here. Creus. No, Cleedence. Cleedence here. Cleedence. Damn it. <laughs> Cleedence here. You, you better not be selling to those kids no more. I, I think these guys mean business. Uh, but that doesn't mean we can't mean business, too. Would you like a tour of the distillery? Ooh. That sounds nice. Hmm. Yeah, that, that seems nice. Come on through. And he leads you over to the shack, um, opens it up, and inside is this you know, great contraption of copper pipes and big vats and all sorts of things and there's like steam blowing out and there's a big fire and there's a whole thing of coal that's being like you know to, to shovel into the fire and uh it's a big you know mess of things there's a whole bunch of potatoes over on one side and well th this here's the operations we make the potatoes or buy the potatoes in town bring them over here uh chop them up all nice put them in this thingy and then we call that a distiller i can't tell you how that works because that's a trade secret uh, it's okay. and then it, I wouldn't understand anyway. Then it gets distilled, and then we purify it through the rapid distillation over and over again, in which we kind of heat it up to the point that the alcohol evaporates, and then it condenses on the surface of this thing and comes down here into this pipe over here, and then that produces the, the alcohol. But sometimes some water comes with it, so we got to triple distill it in order to get all, as much water content out of that as possible. And mm. then Bob's your uncle. <laughs> Um, Neil, while he, they are having the tour through the place, Rupi is going, because she's on the other side of the building, gather some kindling. Okay, you start finding small branches and twigs and uh, you know, the pine the shack needles and stuff. Of, made out of wood, right? Oh yeah, uh, the, the shack is made out of wood, the house is a log cabin. So they're both made out of wood, but the house is, you know, big thick logs still with their bark and moss on it, which oh, makes them fire resistant. The distillery is in the shack, so... Right, the distillery is in the shack, yeah. Uh, and she's got some kindling and waiting a bit, uh, probably he make... overhearing the tour. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you make different flavors? Well, you're on to my future secrets. I've been trying to find a way to take blueberry extract and mix it in with the process. I mean, you can just take blueberry juice and add it at the end, but I feel like that kind of defeats the purpose of having the high-proof drink. So I've been trying to find a way of mashing the blueberries in early and still have the vapors come out and still have the blueberry flavor, but it's not quite working well. Uh, have, have you tried the purple potatoes? Me? Trust me, I've seen them, dude. They're like potatoes, but they're purple. You mean eggplants? No, 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 no. It's not an eggplant. It's not like all big. It's just like a potato, but it's purple on the inside. You mean like it's an onion? Onions are white on the inside. Well, red onions are purple on the inside. Oh, crap, you got me there. Uh, no, dude, it's <laughs> like a, I, I think I saw it in this one place. Uh, uh, Id, Idaho? Idaho, something like that. Mm. Uh, yeah, it actually tasted pretty good. Just, you know, I ain't never seen something like that. I've seen purple carrots. Yeah, but if you can find purple potatoes, and... mm. well, do they taste like blueberries? No, no, they taste like different potatoes. You know, not normal potatoes, but it's different. He looks at Maximilian. Does he always make a lot of sense? No. Excellent, excellent. All right, well, we'll if you find me some purple potatoes, we'll make you a special purple potato blend. It'll be um, half price, a hundred gold for a uh, seven hundred fifty milliliter bottle. Um, Neil, how big is the shed? Fifteen by ten. Then he'll give it to me for one gold. 
Okay. Um, Droopy, while they're having all this fun stuff inside, having gathered some kindling beside the shack, um, Droopy is going to ignite the kindling, leave her flint and steel there, go a bit away, and then cast darkness on the place. <laughs> so Droopy starts a fire. Leaves her flint and steel there, so I mark that off. Right. So there's no fingerprints. <laughs> Goes um, away and cast darkness, so nobody will see the flame. So at some point, you guys are all talking about the the distillery project, and then everything goes dark. And then what, what, we smell the fire. <laughs> what? What in tarnation? What? Oh, oh you no. one of you wizards from the school? Hey, this is this is silly. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm the, I'm, I'm the wizard. Yep. Sh shut uh, up, meathead. Uh, get rid of this darkness, y'all. Some could burn down without it. With it here. <laughs> Well, There's a lot of fire and explosives and flame obviously rolls. Obviously, have, haven't heard us cast a spell, so it couldn't be one of us. Well, I don't know how magic works. Isn't it just a feat of magic? You can just do it with a snap of your fingers. Yeah, like this. Continual light on the area. Ooh, um, the darkness and light cancel each other out. Damn it. Um, <laughs> whew, why, thank you, fine fellow. Now, that was a, that was a mean trick to play, but I, I'll grant you, you're a good prankster. I'll, I'll take you that. I should have oh, taken a second darkness. <laughs> Did someone smell something funny? Yeah, it's almost, almost like fire. It smells like fire. Not cold fire. <laughs> he starts walking out of the, the hut. Let's give him a perception yeah. check. Ooh, 13. He's got to have at least 8 perception, maybe. Let's roll his perception. By the way, Droopy wandered off after casting it, so she's probably out of sight. 6, 7, 8. He does indeed follow his nose around the back of the shack and starts stomping out the fire. Oh, 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 oh. Starts looking. Well, he calls back to the rest of the party. Guys, something here. Shh. And he starts well, yeah. sneaking. Maybe your building isn't very uh, safe. He sneaks all. back into the building and goes, guys, all right, I got to admit something to you now. I ain't the only person what? out here making moonshine. I got competitors, you see. There's a, there's a family of gnomes out here that are trying to make a different moonshine. And uh, I think they just tried to set a fire. You know them gnomes. They're, they're tricksy little creatures into all sorts of illusions. And I think darkness is one of them. So I think they tried to set a fire on my shack. All right. I understand you got your job here enforcing me not selling to the kids no more. But I got a new job for you. I'll give you... Uh, a gallon of this here moonshine if you can go burn down those gnomes little distillery. Ooh. Make me a special 10 distilled or condensed one. The highest proof you can possibly make. Just a single bottle of it if you can. All right. <laughs> you want to burn I'll try <laughs> quadruple distilling. That process is a... Uh... You burn off a lot of vapor. You know, you take about a gallon, you quadruple distill it all the way down, you might end up with a little bit at the very end. I can probably get you a uh, one gallon, uh, one, one bottle for a gallon's worth of work. A That's done deal. Uh, but you uh, you go take care of them gnomes. All right, you follow, head Where down to the creek. Creek right down there. You head up the creek, maybe uh, a half mile, and uh, you don't see it when you come up the creek. The creek goes round a bend, and then there's a little hole in, not a hole, like a doorway in uh, in the earth. And the gnomes live inside there. Their distillery's in there, too. I think you're all a little too big to fit in there, but, well, this ain't the first time right. the gnomes have tried to burn down my shack. All right, and just to be clear, we do this, you don't sell to the kids at the school anymore. Don't be selling to any more children. And make sure Cletus doesn't either. Oh. Well, it's hard sometimes to tell whether someone's a baby-faced or a kid, you know? I, I can promise not to sell at the school no more. And Rex, or no, Cletus, you you're not going to sell to any more kids, knowingly. Right, boy? Cletus nods. All right, well, All right. No, more, no more kid sales. It's unfortunate. They, they make some good money, but we don't want to piss anyone off. We'll just sell it to the to the the taverns that sell it to the kids. Let them take the heat for it. Yeah. Yeah. Put yeah, someone else right. in the middleman. All right. 
<laughs> yeah, throw someone else on the bus. I mean, yeah, under the so, that's, that's more reasonable. I untie the guy. All right. Uh, Cleveland rubs his wrists, shakes hands with Till, with T Rex. We're just going to call him that from now on, T Rex. Uh, and says, Well, if uh, you don't need me for anything else. Oh, that was a great nap, by the way. I'm going to go out. Got a hot date tonight. <laughs> Lovely little half-elf. Mm. All right. Nice. Mm. Okay. So Cletus heads off, and uh, T-Rex points you the way to the creek. Mm. And Groupie joins them after they le- leave the clearing. Okay. Oh, and I yell back, by the way, I don't know of any permanent darkness, but that was permanent light, so that's going to be bright as daylight all the time. They cancel each other. All the time. All the time. They cancel each other. Yeah, yeah. the two spells actually fizzle one another. Oh, wait. No, I don't... Ma- wait, uh, what is the description of continual light? Because it, it, if it is... No, the two spells just cancel. It's you not know, a matter of I, area. It's just it's straight up cancels. I don't know. And demigods stood. She could cast all the darkness that she wanted, and it still kept being continual light until they dispelled it. I guess you would need a continual darkness. And let me guess, that spell don't exist. No, yeah, it does. Clerics uh, oh, it. Clerics have it. Oh, okay. <laughs> let me see. Do I? Yes, I. I will have it if I get to level five. <laughs> Uh, it's darkness, fifteen foot radius. No, uh, twenty foot radius. Okay, it's the the cleric spell, continual mm-hmm. light. Okay. Yep, that guy's gonna have to come, have a cleric come by and fix it. Or he just has daylight all around his distillery. Yeah, that's probably not a good thing. I mean, he does not need any uh, torches or anything to shed light anymore. Yeah, but also it's going to be lit up in the middle of the night, which you might not want. You know, it might attract weird attention. Creatures (laughs) wandering through the woods at night, like ogres or bugbears, might be attracted to the light and come inspect it. Mm. Are you in trouble, Quantum? Uh, No, I just thought I heard someone's car alarm going off. Oh, that's not exciting. But I was probably just going crazy. One of two things has been happening. <laughs> Turns out so, I'm like on the edge of the time, time, time to go kill some gnomes. <laughs> said anything be... about killing? Dear God, you guys are more... <laughs> I mean... What did you expect, please? <laughs> the Spanish Inquisition? Uh, Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. I did. Nobody does. But Neil Nobody. Does. All right. So you guys head down the creek, start following it um, until you come around the bend. And just like he said, you come around some corner and boom, there's a door in the the side of the earth. There's a a slight rise that the the creek goes around and there's like a three foot door. It's like a big circular door like you would have seen in um, Lord of the Rings Mm. in the Fellowship Uh, of the Ring. Droopy looks up to Zen Perry. Fun. I open up the door and see what's inside. You open the door, and on the other side are three very surprised gnomes. They're looking at you. Hey well, there. The the woman Neil. says, Neil. "What are you doing in my home?" Web. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> really? You just gonna web them? <laughs> they are all webbed and completely surprised by it. <laughs> all right. Oh, Zen, I didn't expect you to be so aggressive here. Oh, okay. well, <laughs> uh, they not- they start shouting very quickly in Namish. I don't. Damn it! I don't have my flint and steel. <laughs> I think I set the web on fire. <laughs> oh, what do you use to set them on fire, though? I've got torches. I've got flint and steel. God. All right. So they're they're jabbering in Namish as quickly as possible as you light your uh, uh, torch. <laughs> whoa, 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 Zen! You're just gonna straight up burn the house? 
<laughs> need to get rid of the gnomes, don't we? So how much damage does web do when it's burned? 2d4 2D or something? 2d4. 2d4. <sighs> Roll me 2d4. <laughs> two. Loopy has a crossbow ready in case anyone knows. It. <laughs> it's yep. actually two. All right. What Zen, you monster? <laughs> what is gnome HP? Whoops, that is two. not the right book. Because <laughs> I don't think it's D eight. It's probably like D six or something, or maybe even D four. <laughs> or no. it, it's probably two. Wait, what were they shouting in gnomish anyways? Because I understand gnomish. Oh my god! The monsters are here! They're gonna kill us all! Oh dear god! Jesus, I love you so much! Please! Please! Oh god, I think that- Why are we stuck in this sneaky thing? Oh my god, the fire's coming up! This is the end! Children, I love you! Your mother loves you dearly! Ah! Wait, that didn't- That didn't rhyme. They deserve to die. Well, I mean, they're a little panicked. They're not taking the time to be polite when their certain doom is facing them. They deserve to die. The third gnome in the back, the small child, dies instantly in the fire. Um, the other two actually survive the fire, and we're going to have to roll initiative. Yes. Um, as these gnomes go into a frenzy to save themselves. Even How though there are there? Two that you can see. Okay. I'm just going to shovel them. I'm going to shovel night on them. All right, I go at three. Oh God! All right. Oh, I'm rolling d20s again. Damn it. Uh, we'll just oh, subtract okay. ten from them. Oh, so it, well, wait, that doesn't make I'm sense. Assuming it's zero. zero. Oh no, because then it's perfect. A ten is from one to ten, so you roll the twelve. If you roll above ten, then just subtract ten. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, it's small in there, Neil. Three, seven, twelve. It's what? It's small in there. <laughs> yeah, it's right? really small. It's too small for you to fit. 3, 7, 12, 12. 3 goes first. Magic missile at each of them. All right. Uh, give me d4 plus 1. Or 2d4 yeah, plus. It's, yeah. Ooh, yeah, it's a 5 and, two, and 2. They both survive. Mm. Just barely. One survived 7 damage. Yeah. Must have had 8 HP. Must have at had least. 8 HP. Uh, Droopy, you go at 7. It's your turn. Droopy is... Ruby is going to shovel the one who's most hurt. Okay, they both look pretty bad off, so make me a shovel attack roll. 13. Smacks one of the gnomes, the wife, the mother. I don't smack, I stab with the You gnome. stab her with your pointed shovel. Four d4 points of damage, one point of damage. Uh, she goes down in a gurgling. Oh. Um, the male gnome goes for the short sword by the front door, looks dead in the kobold's eyes, and says in unbroken common, you murdered my wife! <laughs> and launches himself at Droopy in a full-fledged attack. Okay, roll. Oh, it's a two. It was no. right next to a natural 20. Damn it. <laughs> All right, the short sword misses the no uh, the, the, the kobold. Um... Okay. Brocky. And Maximilian. All right. And Maximilian. Together it was one. So, uh, can I hit the dude who tacked Droopy? No, it's too small. You can't swing your two-handed sword in there. No, I've got my rock, Neil. Oh, you could throw the rock, but it would be 50-50 right. chance to hit this guy or Droopy. You Firing into melee. With, can't you step with a two-hander through the door? No. I mean, two-handed slashing. No stabbing. Um, nope. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to get ready in case the little guy runs out. Okay, initiative for next round. Wait, I, I, I didn't do oh, anything. Oh, I'm sorry, Max. Your turn. Right. I wanted to cast Improved Phantasmal Force and create a fog to cover the crime scene here. Ooh, a thick fog covers everything. All right. Well, uh, from the outside, it's not going to go in. Oh, okay. It covers the outside of the everything. All right. Initiative. Yeah. Ooh, okay, goes at five. I'm going to... So, you know, I'm just doing the same thing. Do I need to roll initiative for that? Just like uh, No, you, you can have an attack readied. You're good. Right. You're good to go. I'm going at four, because Droopy is going to... Go for it, Droopy. Carefully uh, hurry with her shovel and go, go out of the door. 
All right, so you're going to take a defensive action and withdraw. Yeah, and go out of the door. Uh, The gnome goes after you and runs into the fog looking for Droopy. Let's see if the gnome can find you in the fog with a perception check. Oh! So I've got my... I've What's got it? my little rock. Can I see when he runs out? I think so, yeah. Go ahead and make your ready to attack. Eleven's <laughs> a hit. <laughs> Scratch. <laughs> bye bye. <sighs> you cave in the gnome's head, he dies. Got him! <laughs> oh, God. I mean, I'm evil, but I don't know about you guys. <laughs> I'm like, what are you guys doing? You just straight up murdered these gnomes. Wait, what'd they do? <laughs> they're they just the store, competitors. Right? <laughs> comp- yeah, you guys don't know. Uh, you guys don't know how this business stuff works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to be tough to stand in the business. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say also... out of this, but remember, she doesn't want to know what we had to do. So here's the gnome's little home. The, the child in the back has been burned. The, the mother has been combat shoveled, and the father has had his head caved in with a rock. Um, is, there, is there a distillery, Neil? Uh, you're going to have to search the house to find it. Well, I'm going to search the house for valuables. All That's right. Sure. You walk into the house, take a left through the door. There's the kitchen, and right next to the kitchen is the most intricate, amazing pipe work you've ever seen. It's all these beautifully well-crafted lead pipes that move all around and attach to all these different things. And there's, you know, one of them comes out to the faucet in the kitchen and one of them comes out above the ceiling or goes to the roof, probably goes out through the um, the earth above. There's all these pots and barrels and containers and, you know, something's whistling and there's some wind chimes attached to something. There's cranks and levers and valves and it doesn't make any sense to your five intelligent kobold character, but... Mm. It's complicated and beautiful. Okay, I'm going to look for on for valuables. I don't care for the distillery. Okay. Uh, nobody else can really fit inside the house. Yeah. Um, so really I'm just rummaging through the place. Droopy, you start moving around looking for valuables. You start pocketing some money you find. You find like some nice silver candlesticks and pocket those. You know, the silverware is made out of iron. That's pretty worthwhile. So you pocket that, or it's steel. So you pocket that. And then you come into the bedroom, and there's a crib. And inside the crib is a baby gnome. Let me see. What, what do I have? <laughs> I got a dick. <laughs> Holy crap. You monster. Uh, do I find any other valuables? Besides. <laughs> you ignore the child in the cradle and keep looking through the house. You've come across plenty of other valuables. Uh, okay. Um, could you just write me anything in, maybe in Zoom set? Uh, sure, I'll I... send you a private message. Oh. What do you do about and... the baby gnome? I give it some of the milkweed. <laughs> my <mother's laughs> oh my it's not gonna like it. Okay, you give the baby some of the milkweed, mm. and then I'm going to go out and to to then pipes there in there. Nothing else. Very gnomes? Sure. I throw the gnome that was outside back in and uh, just try to like break open the doorway and then try to get just like the front to collapse in. Hmm. Sure. I think between the four of you, you can break the house enough to collapse the front of it down to block the entrance. There's like a couple of other windows here and there that look out. There's one in the kitchen, um, another one on the side. But you can kind of, you can, if you take a couple of hours, you can destroy the house to make it, someone would have to dig it out. 
And then you guys head back to shenanigans in the darkest of timelines. And we're going to go to our break before we finish up the show. We'll see you guys on the other side of the break. Bye, everyone.